Glad to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And this is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. Welcome. We are so glad you're aboard. As you listen to today's show, we'll be telling you how you can attend, get registered to attend one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. These are taught at local universities all around the area, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Your choice, one day or two day course. It's $29 to attend and it is a donation. It goes to charity. We'll be telling you much more about these courses coming up. If you'd like more information or to get registered right away, Visit the website, retirementplanningedu.org, or keep the number handy throughout the show, 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, great to be with you in the new year. I want to talk about this new year, 2021. They always say that hindsight is 2020. Speaking of that, when you look <laughs> back great. on that That's year, awesome. 2020, <laughs> what can we learn? What are some of those lessons, hard lessons, perhaps, that we learned and we can carry into the new year? Well, Paul, I I think this year can be used for so many lessons from a retirement managing emotions when as it applies to your your finances. So many lessons to be learned this year, and we only have so much time. So we're going to focus on just the top ones. And I think the, the the number one lesson is that we can't be so emotional about when we get in and out of the markets. Right? Truly, there are very few people. Very few people, despite people overconfident, right? But very few people have the skill set to be traders. We should all be investors, especially those nearing or in retirement should be investors. So therefore, we can't allow short-term market events, whatever they are, to impact our decisions about being in and out of the market. Yeah. I think 2020 probably highlights that point better than maybe any year that I can remember and only because it, it, we went from such extremes, right? I mean, Did. Where, the, where the market was at an all-time high, Mark was an all-time low, it's back up to an all-time high, right? And, and you know, if you, if you allowed yourself to be emotional and reacted emotionally, and, and it's easy for us to sit here and, not, and tell people not to, we're going to get into all the things that maybe help you so you don't. But if you were one of those people that in March you panicked, you're kicking yourself right now, right? I mean, you're not happy. Paul, we know 35% yeah. of people over the age of 65 panicked in March at the bottom. Most of them aren't back in. so And we'll, they, never, and we'll never get back in or, or, because they won't right. know when to get back in. Yeah, or they're, or they're going to do something desperate, bad, bad outcomes when we are so emotional. And part of the reason that they were so emotional is, candidly, we had the Longest and biggest bear, bull market we've had in history, right? I mean, the longest run. We had an irrational market that just went up. That's all it did for, I don't know, eight years or so, right? And so overconfidence, people stretching their risk tolerance because there was nothing to forecast this event. So the overconfidence, everyone's making money. Everyone thinks they're an expert because they could throw a dart at the wall. And if you made money, that doesn't mean you did well or you know what you're doing. Trust me, it just you were fortunate because you were part of the tide that was lifting. And and so people were taking excessive risk and got trapped, got caught in. Paul, hopefully this lesson will help people to recognize the value of our nonprofit organization we created, the Retirement Education Foundation. And why we are teaching these seven-hour courses every month at all the major universities. And obviously during COVID, we are streaming these live from the universities or our learning center here in Livonia. We are beginning to do small group court classes, seven hours, where we allow just 10 people in the class and stream it live so people can stay at home and watch it if they want. It's a 200-page textbook. It's $29 donation to charity to attend. I hope we learn from our lessons of 2020 and educate yourself about what you need to know on how to construct your retirement plan or have someone help you construct your retirement plan in retirement. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. You know, Kirk, something that 
I think about, there's something you said that really triggered a thought in my mind. You know, what's the rule? What's the basic rule of investing? You, when do you buy and when do you sell? Right? Well, right. Right. You, you think about it. We're every, and, and we, in our class, we'll always say, say to people, what's that rule? And how many of you actually follow that rule, right? The whole idea is you buy low, you sell high. 30, you said 35%? 35%. 35% you're saying of people in March-ish or during the pandemic yeah. sold, right? Yeah. When when it, when the market went down to about eighteen thousand or something, right. right? It was down what thirty four percent. Right now, the best case scenario is they get back in now. And the market's over thirty thousand right now, right? Right, eighteen down, low, down low. Now it's up, up to 30. thirty, and you're now if you, if a best case scenario, you you're buying in at thirty. That is the exact opposite of what you should be doing. And, no one ever thinks they're going to do it. And we always say people do it because of emotions. It's a perfect example. Happens all the time. Happens Paul. all the time. It's the reason over the last 30 years, the S&P 500 is performing over 9, 10% now. And the average retail investor is performing at about 3%. That's exactly why. That's if this exact reason, Paul, if you miss 30 of the best days over the last 20 years, if you just tried to time the market and you were off and you missed 30 30 of the best days over a 20-year period, you have a negative return over that 20 years. Stop timing the market. Stop trading the markets. Invest. Have a plan so that when there are market vol volatility and those short-term market events, that you're able to pivot. We're never going to have another event like this, Kurt. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> so, so that's obviously – Ridiculous, right? We, no, it is because we we have we have event market events every four to seven years. Whether it's an election, recession, now pandemic, something is going to happen throughout your retirement. So the idea of not educating yourself to understand where the, don't fall for our industry's traps. It's not simple, and there's no one size that fits all. It's not the investments you choose. It's the income plan. And when you are taking income from which accounts at what age to manage those market events that we're going to experience. And that's why we teach these seven-hour courses, and we teach it at all the major universities. We're also streaming them live during COVID. And if you'd like to register, you can go to retirement planning edu.org retirementplanningedu.org it's $29 donation to charity to attend or you can call 800-240-8981 and we will be back with Kirk and Paul right after this Great to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and we're talking about lessons we can learn from the past year that we can apply to this new year, 2021. Happy New Year, everyone. I want to give you the phone number if you'd like to get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. And you can do that by calling today. The number is 800 240 8981. These are retirement planning courses. You can also go to the website. Very easy to get registered there. Retirementplanningedu.com. Now, one of the biggest lessons that we all had to learn is don't get emotional, right? Which is sometimes hard because we're human. We're emotional creatures. And that seems to point to another lesson, Kirk and Paul, which is don't be so short-sighted, right? Megan, you're right. And here's what's challenging about not thinking and being so short-sighted or what we, we often reference is emotional, right? We've got to take the emotions out of your money, and that is so challenging. And I know for baby boomers, I mean, baby boomers almost wear like a badge of honor where in 2007, 2008 financial crisis we had, that they that they didn't panic, right? They love to come in and tell us they were disciplined, they didn't panic. And now we're going to have some who are going to say we were disciplined and didn't panic this time. And the variable that everyone forgets, and maybe probably because they just don't understand. Remember, this is the first time you're ever going to go through this part of your life, retirement, right? You are Your relationship with money is going to change. You are never going to feel so vulnerable. For most people, the problem isn't overspending their money. It's true once they retire. It's underspending their money and making really irrational decisions about their investments and, and, and market timing, 
really getting in, getting out. I'm getting away from the markets. I don't know what to do, how to do it, because nobody else is paying you anymore. You have to pay yourself, and it's got to last you the rest of your life. And you don't know if there's going to be a health event. You don't know what is going, where the traps are, and you, but you do know, you're smart enough to know that we're going to have a market event every four to seven years, period. And so, unfortunately, a lot of people way underspend what they could otherwise spend, at least those who are attending our course who have resources, this is what we find. But for most people, they continue to allow these short-term events. And I, I think of, we had, we had two this year, right, Paul? We had the pandemic. We had an election, a very unique election in our history. And how many people got that wrong? Just like they got it wrong when Trump was elected. Remember? Sure. People panicked the same right. way. Right. right. It depends on what side you are. I'm going to cash. The market's going to crash. The world's going to end. Trump's crazy, right? Yeah, and, and turns out the market's been up, what, over 50% since Trump was elected. We had the greatest right. economic boom right. we've had, right? right. So, so, And then conversely, conversely, right. Biden's elected. The market's going to crash. The market's up quite a bit since he got elected, well, right? A lot. Since a lot. Elected, right. right. So, the, the point is, don't let these external events dictate your decisions, right? And people often allow. If, and it's because their relationship, I mean, because they feel more vulnerable. They don't course, even know course. they're behaving that of way, course, Paul. Of course. You know, I, you know. Megan made the comment, don't be short-sighted, right? And I'm thinking, who would have ever thought, just to throw a, a statistic, who would have ever thought that in the middle of a pandemic, right, where economies across the, the world are shutting down, yeah. right? Yeah. Biggest economies in the world are shutting down. Over 1.7 million people have died from this. And a week before the end of the year, the market was up, what, 17%? Insane. Insane. So the the point of that is, and and Megan, again, going back to Megan's comment, the point is if you're short-sighted and you allow these events, whether it's the election, whether it's a pandemic, to dictate your decisions, at the end of the day, you're going to make really bad decisions. At the end of the day, you're you're going to be penalized. It's going to hurt you. You're going to end up selling at the wrong time, buying at the wrong time, trying to time this, and invariably you will fail. And we've seen that. We meet people all the time in our classes, people who tell us horror stories of things they wish they wouldn't have done because they didn't plan. They had no plan. So the last segment today, Paul, we're going to talk about what a plan is, because I think we we throw around in our class, in our class, in our shows regularly, this need to have a plan. And we often explain what a plan is, but I think it's really important we we. We summarize specifically what a plan is. But before the plan even begins, Paul, you first need to have the education to understand where the traps and the mistakes and how you're emotionally going to behave through your 60s, 70s, and 80s because it's different. Yeah, completely. You you threw out a statistic and you went over quickly because we're we're always rushing and we feel like we got to get so much in, right? Yep. And you made a comment that I think needs to be restated because I think if the listeners really try to digest this this statistic, they're blown away, right? You said over a 20-year period, right? Correct. If you miss the top five days. No, 30 days. 30 days. Top 30 days. I have another statistic uh, that I'm thinking about here. You are going to end up in a negative return. Right. Over that 20-year period, you lost money. If you just missed 30 30 of the best days. So basically, another way to say this is if you think you're going to time the market and you're going to pick when you're going in and when you're going out, unless you are truly a genius of geniuses and you have this crystal ball, if you would have done this over that 20-year period, you would actually be down. Okay. So we talked about this. It's an amazing statistic. And, and I want to quantify this and prove it, right? So even the experts, ready? Mutual fund managers, they are paid. They've created funds because they're supposed to be the experts that are supposed to perform well. Over the last 30 years, mutual fund managers are performing at 3.98%. The S&P 500 is performing almost 10%. 3.98% and 40% of all mutual funds created die. And within 10 years, 40% of them fail. So you yourself think, I know you guys are really bright, sophisticated. Baby boomers have done really well financially. I get it. If you can't tell me what percentage of the S&P 500 is healthcare, financial services, technology, communications. If you can't tell me these things, you are not qualified 
to be trading and investing your money. Well, let me rephrase. You can invest your money, but not picking and choosing and trying to time the markets. And you have to learn, and, and this is what we teach in the class, the investment part is the easiest part of retirement planning. It's the income plan that requires that creates the effective outcomes, right? And so this is why we teach seven-hour courses. We teach them at all the major universities. We go through a 200-page textbook. It's very advanced. It's $29 to attend. It's That $29 is a donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800 240 Eight nine eight one, And we will be back. There's much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak. If you'd like to attend one of their upcoming courses, and remember, these are courses that are held virtually or at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University Novi campus or Oakland University, your choice, one day course or a two day course, call today 800 240 8981, or you can register online. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org. As we talk about the lessons that we can all learn from 2020 and apply to 2021, especially as it relates to our finances and retirement planning, Kirk and Paul, we have to talk about interest rates. What did we learn from low interest rates in 2020 that we can take into this new year? Megan, we have been saying this for a number of years. It's the war on seniors and savers. So we have historically low interest rates. It really impacts retirement plans, more so than the financial service industry is leading on, right? Some very interesting lessons were learned in 2020 in that we have bonds and equities highly correlated. It became more evident when we had the September pullback again. We had a pullback in September and we saw bonds get crushed at the same time. We really have had an environment where bonds and equities have been pretty highly correlated for a number of years. It's something we've been talking about and teaching and warning about in our courses. But I think finally this year, our the, the financial service industry has stood up and taken notice of this. And it's because they can no longer use the whole conventional 60-40 allocation, 60% stocks, 40% bonds, and take out 4% a year to live on. That rule fails now when we back test it. When we use the software called Monte Carlo and we run these simulations to see how frequently they will succeed or fail, with these low interest rates, they are failing a lot. It's almost 30% of the time if you're going to take 4% out. But yet our industry hasn't, again, there's still, the financial service industry is still convinced that there's a simple solution for retirement planning. And maybe there is for the average retiree, Paul. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not that complicated. And so when the industry is, the, the talking heads, the experts, Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey's, all these people go have their TV shows and go on radio and write books, and your advisors are following these strategies, they're taught, it, it may work for those people who are retiring, the average person, right? We know the average person retires with $200,000 saved for retirement. Now, if you're not average, and you've saved and have more resources than that for retirement. These rules are going to fail you. There is fail you. There is there's not a one size fits all solution. And it's becoming more. You're seeing more and more articles about this, Paul. This low interest rate environment, the highly correlated to the equities. Now their their solution is taking on more risk. They want 75 percent stocks. All mistakes for an emotional investor because you are going to be emotional in retirement. Yeah. And if you think, if you if you want to bet against the feds. That's another point. That, I, I, that, especially regarding interest rates, I think you're, you're going to fail, right? I mean, they've already made the commitment that they're, the goal is to keep interest rates this low for the next couple of years. So if you think that 2020 is going to be some unique time and all of a sudden you're going to start making money on your CDs or make money on your savings accounts, 
you're, you're wrong. It's it, it, The Fed is pretty committed to this, and, and, and I think they've proven in 2020 they're going to win. They're going to do whatever it takes to keep this economy going, and I think they've proven themselves. So, you know, without getting too technical, fighting the Fed, what they're referring to is, is – and I don't want to get too technical, but the Fed is willing – their willingness to do anything to stimulate this economy, they're so – they're not worried about inflation. They are going to hold these interest rates as low as they can for as long as they can, making money cheap to stimulate this economy. And the problem is for retirees is you can't generate yield from CDs, Paul's said your money market accounts the war on senior and saviors this is what we're talking about now your challenge is when we do start to see interest rates rise or if we do see inflation that means your bonds are going to see as interest rates rise your bonds that you own will go down in value this is a misconception that retirees and investors don't quite understand as interest rates go up the value of the bonds you own go down. This is a really, and this is what the industry recognizes there's a problem, right? The financial service industry, all year, that's the lesson. They've, they're they learning. They just don't have the solutions. Well, they do, but the solution requires a lot of time, custom planning, uh, being able to pivot during market volatility to eliminate risk like sequence of return risk to maximize your income planning to avoid fixed income in a really challenging bond market so if i can say something about bonds because i think we could do a whole show on bonds but the one thing we have and we will (laughs) the the one thing about bonds especially in this low interest rate environment is is and we've seen this a lot you really have one of two options right you either put your assuming all of you primarily have your money in bond funds Right, which you do. Which you're either going to end up owning bond funds that have bonds in them that, because interest rates are so low, your yields are so small, so low, you're not earning anything, or you are actually earning something, and because and because the bond fund managers are putting money into junk bonds, which also creates great risk. So the problem with this low interest rate environment, taking excessive risk to get a higher yield, get a higher yield. So all of you that have forty percent, six fifty percent of your money in bonds thinking that's the solution to your retirement, you're going to fail. I hate to say it. Oh, it's not even a debate anymore. Morgan Stanley, Barclays, Goldman Sachs, uh, J.P. Morgan, they've all come out and said, I mean, their their forecast for the next 10 years, if you have 60% of your money in stocks and 40% of your money in bonds, is you're going to perform at about 3% or less. Your bonds are not going to perform over the next 10 years. If you own bond funds, you you have no chance of making money. This is why a one size fits all solution for retirement can't work. You got to you've got to educate yourself before you hire somebody or if you've hired somebody, you have to get some education to know where the traps are and what a real retirement plan actually looks like. That's why the classes are so intense. They're 7 hours. It's 200 page textbook. We teach it at all the major universities, right? And we are now, because of COVID, streaming them live along with doing small groups so we can keep social distancing and and being safe. If you'd like to attend, it's a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we will be back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Happy to be with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak. Remember, you can always follow Kurt and Paul on Facebook. That's right. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation, like their page, so you can stay up to date with everything they're doing to help you get ready for your dream retirement. We've been looking back, and I know they say hindsight's 2020, which is very apropos, given that that's the year we're trying to learn some lessons from Kirk and Paul, lessons that we can carry into 2021, especially about our finances and getting ready for retirement. You know, one of the things we have to talk about if we're talking about financial planning, retirement planning, is the importance of diversification. Is it still key in 2021 moving forward? I think it's never been more important. I mean, particularly, Paul, with, I mean, we we learned some lessons that how diversification has helped through 2020. 
tremendously, right? It really stabilized the volatility for people if they were truly vol- uh, diversified. But if you think about where the multiples, the multiples of companies are today, it's never been more important. And it, it's multiples. It, you got to you got to go ahead. It. Explain. So multiples basically is you you buy a stock for a certain price, right? You compare the price of that stock to how much they earn. And when you talk about high multiples, you're talking about companies that are expensive, where the price of the stock is so much greater than actually their earnings per share that they're beyond expensive is is an understatement. Yeah, they're they're, they're really at historic. Many of them are at historic highs. So, right. so the point is, and it's why we've always we always Paul for since since I've been in business, we have believed in indexing, right? Passive buy and hold. Buy the index, and you're going to win. And every through any period, any extended period of time in history, indexing has won and continues to win, and will continue to win moving forward. We can't pick winners and losers here. Too many times, I know people own Apple. I own Apple. Our clients own Apple in our private practice. Apple's a great company, but you can't have 10, 20, 30 percent of your investments in Apple. Companies fail. Enron. Uh, WorldCom. Well, how about Disney's stock didn't go up for a 13-year period. They made money. Their company grew. Great company. But they were so expensive after 2000 that they were flat, right? We see it. GE is a great IBM. There's so many examples of this where we lose decades, where they're still great companies. They're, they don't go out of business like WorldCom and Enron. They're still great companies. The value of your stock doesn't go up because you're buying at such a high multiple. It's they're, they're mispriced, right? And so the companies continue to grow. They continue to do well. You just don't make money right. owning the stock. You know, it's a, it, it is amazing how, how still so many people, especially in their early 50s, 50s, 60s, who, you know, may think they're going to work forever. So they think they can do this, who who really try to, you know, they try to outsmart the market. So they're thinking, oh, you know, this sector is going to do great. So I'm going to put the majority of my money in the sector or this stock is going to do great. So I'm going to put, and I, you know, I just think of people I've met over the, over the 2020, over the past year, how many people thought a sector was going to make it and didn't do well and how they lost so much. And it, it, it's, it's one thing if you're 20 years old or 30 years old, maybe, and you got 30, 20, 30 years before you retire, you want to swing hard and hopefully hit a home run. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're in your 50s or 60s, for sure, 70s, and you're, you're, you're trying to figure out the best market, the best sector, the best stock, that's a fool's game. I'm sorry. What you, what, Why? What's the per- What are you doing? What, what well, are you, can- sometimes it's greed. I mean, sadly, there are some people who just love making money, yeah. right? Or they just love the feeling of... Of hitting a home run. They want to be the smartest person. They want sometimes to be, that's ego. Right. That's, sometimes ego. What's amazing is you talk to these people and they always tell you about their wins. Yeah. <laughs> they never, ever seem to tell you about their losses. And you know what? I, 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 I think of some people I've met in the last two months where they love telling me about all their wins. But when you go through their statements. Not so good. It's not so good. The average they're, they're, hasn't been great. They had a couple of amazing wins. They had a, some serious losses. At the end of the day, they didn't make but, money. But, but forget all of that. Why? Because you're right, because agreed. A lot of times it's because when you're young, it's okay to take chance and risk. And it's become a lifestyle. It, they, it's, it's who you are. It's your identity. This is how you invest. Sometimes it's an addiction. It's totally they, an addiction. They love the high. It, but guys and gals, look, you sh- your risk should be determined based upon your needs when you're in your mid-50s or above. Literally, mid 50s or above, your risk, what you should be doing, should be driven by what you need to give you what you want in retirement. It's kind of like, I mean, and we quote Warren Buffett. I mean, I think every show I say this you have to be insane to risk something you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you already have enough to give you what you want, then what are you doing? But the it's problem, either greed or they don't but, know what they have. I was going to say the problem is oh, that's so where education. many people have no clue that they have enough. It's amazing. Amazing. How many people? Well, Paul, that's where they either don't know or it becomes habit. This is just what they do. This is their habit. This is how they've invested. This is how they've been Or they successful. have an advisor 
who basically has told them, well, I think you sort of have enough. There's a decent probability. People just don't know. They, it's what they've been doing for years, right? And it's been what's I, I, this is what works for me. It's working. Yeah, but it's you guys. It has to change your strategies, your approach, your investment philosophies must change once you're within five to 10 years of retirement. And the problem you're going to have, and we're going to talk about it next segment, you don't get to always, most of the time, you don't get to choose when you retire. We're going to talk about it in the next segment. So that's why I said 55, your risk, how you invest should be driven by your needs and wants for retirement and legacy, right? And so, by the way, if legacy is important to you, please don't put your own retirement at peril at risk to satisfy this legacy need. There's another way to do it. We teach you legacy strategies in the class. So it's a whole different time in your life. It requires all new strategies that our industry is ignoring because the strategy, the financial service industry ignores it because the strategies that are required to execute planning for retirement requires a lot of time and expertise and liability. This is why you have to educate yourself. This is why we teach seven-hour courses at every major university, Michigan, Michigan State, Eastern Michigan, Oakland University, and we teach at our learning center. We are streaming them live with COVID, and we are doing small groups so that those who want to attend in person can come safely. It's a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Bettler. Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. We've been taking a look back at the year 2020. A lot to look back on. What is it, though, about that year that perhaps we could learn from, carry into this brand new year? Well, turns out there's a lot. In fact, there is something to be said about not getting to choose your own timeline, Kirk and Paul. This was a wake up for so many people, especially right here in our community. You know, you always think you can choose your retirement date. We learned in 2020, sometimes somebody else chooses that for you, right? Megan, I, this is such a misconception. It's not just 2020. I, I think 2020 ex was exaggerated this because it was so public and well known and documented. And, you know, we had millions and millions of people unemployed and forced into retirement and buyouts. So I think it was in the forefront. But given Paul and I's experience in our private practice, where we take care of a thousand people over a billion dollars, and we teach, we have taught over many, many years, thousands of people at all the different universities. This idea, and it's really sad because most people really think they are going to pick and choose when they're going to retire. Unfortunately, and it doesn't matter how, what education you have, what experience you have, if you're an executive engineer, I don't care who you are. For many people, you're not going to get to choose when you retire. And it's not just because you're going to get laid off or lose your job, but it's often a health event that often happens in our 50s and 60s. It's been, a, for us, a really emotional year because not only did a ton of people lose their jobs, but we had, I think, more than any other year because of COVID, but other things as well, not just COVID, because I don't want to let people use the excuse of COVID. We lost so many people in their 50s and 60s this year die. They died, right? You don't know. You're starting to come up on the age where you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And to not be prepared and plan for retirement, for a death of a spouse, to have your affairs in order. And to put things off that you otherwise could be doing is foolish. I'm just telling you from years of experience helping thousands of people, you got to trust us on this one. You got to get yourself educated in your ducks in a row. Yeah. If, if I can, just for a second, I mean, I, I totally agree. I don't think 2020 was, every year this is an issue. I think it's not, this is not new, but I do think 2020 highlighted the point. Vulnerability. Vulnerability and and this idea that you're going to keep working because you're going to decide when you can retire. 
I mean, just to throw a couple numbers out that I think are, are meaningful. During the pandemic, during, a, you know, February, Mar- March, April period, there were 4 million Americans that were forced into retirement before they wanted to. 4 million. 4 million. Over 3 million were forced to go part-time even though they needed to work full-time. So you're talking 7 million Americans either were forced to retire or forced to work part-time. The baby reason, boomers. Baby you're boomers. just talking about baby boomers. Actually, you know, the age between 55 and 70. Yep. 55. I didn't say yep. 65. Yep. If you think of that, those statistics and you think all those people, you're 55, 60 years old and you're driving your car, you're listening to our show and you're thinking, you know what? I, I don't have to worry about planning because I got five, I got 10 years. This stuff doesn't apply to me. At the end of the day, things happen. You don't, you don't get to decide often when you're going to retire or how much you can work. Other people are going to make these decisions for you. And, and, and we've met people who were forced to retire. We've also, we also know people who said, I'm going to quit my job. I'm 65 years old. I'm an engineer. I'm a smart guy. I'm a smart woman. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to find another job sure you are. making the same amount of money. And how sure often you do we, you know, month, two, three, five months later, they can't get a job. There is ageism out there, folks. I hate to say it. If you're 55 to Very 70. Prevalent. You know, they'd rather pay someone who's 30 years old half the money. And you know what's funny about that, Paul? How often do we need people? We warn them, look, if you take this buyout or you retire from this job because you want your lump sum, I get it. But you don't have enough yet. You don't need to make a lot. You just need to work for the next three years, whatever it is. But I, and I only need you to make fifty, eighty thousand $80,000 a year. That's it. And your plan works. You're good. And, they're, and, they, and they, had, they left a job making $150,000 plus thousand dollars a year that refuse to take that $80,000 a year job. They ref- or the $50,000 a year. They refuse because of their ego. Because they right? because they're making 150 dollars But 200. that's all they need I know. to make their plan work. It's true. And this causes so many problems. So, but the, the bigger message, Paul, these are all examples that can be avoided by education. And that's why we're going to talk about the class again in a few minutes. But why you need to spend seven hours in a classroom to understand where the traps are, if you have enough, when will you have enough, and what are the best ways to take income from what accounts at what age? If I can plug one more thing in. Oh, yes, please. So not only is that important, but don't wait to your – don't think that you can, you, you can attend – you can learn about retirement planning when you're a year from retirement or two years because at the end of the day – you, it may not, you may not have another year or two years or five years. You don't. You, it, it, things happen. And, and, uh, and 7 million Americans learned it in 2020. If they waited to the last minute to plan for retirement, sorry to say, you know, they're in bad shape. Just, there's no reason to procrastinate on this. There's zero. There's in, in half the time, Paul, it's not that even a lot of times people are working and they don't need to be working. They just don't know that they don't need to be working. Right. Or they retired and they're way underspending what they otherwise could be spending if they just understood what you could do and where the traps are and how to avoid those traps. It just comes down to education. Look, we have lost this year to death so many people in their 50s and 60s. It's been a horrific year. I can't, in our pr- private practice, it's been incredible. Cancer, strokes, uh, accidents, COVID, all of these things, people think they have all this time. Your window might be really small. It may be really large. And the better you're prepared and don't allow short-term events to dictate what you're doing and when you're doing, the happier you are going to be in retirement. It's why we teach Our seven-hour courses, this is a comprehensive course. We go through a 200-page textbook. We teach you how to construct your own retirement plan, or at least how to find somebody to help you and what you should be looking for. We teach it at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State, Novi, and Troy campuses, Oakland University, in Livonia, in our learning center. We're streaming it live with COVID, and we're still doing small groups right now with social distancing. If you'd like to attend or stream and watch one of these courses, it's $29 tuition, and that goes to charity. And you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. 
here with Kirk and Paul. Glad you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour. We're learning some lessons today. That's right. We're looking back at 2020 and applying some lessons from that year to this brand new year. Happy New Year, everyone. And we want to talk about the ultimate lesson we can learn. And of course, that is planning, right? This is something that's so central to our conversations each and every week, Kirk and Paul. Planning is key. Tell us why. Megan, it's really, candidly, the reason we started or the reason why the Retirement Education Foundation was started almost 10 years ago, right? The Retirement Education Foundation is a nonprofit organization designed to provide advanced financial literacy related to retirement planning, right? And it's really quite specific. These are seven hour courses. And I know we talk about this probably just about every one of our radio shows is what is a plan, but we're going to continue to stress what is and isn't a plan because many of you think you have a plan because you have some diversified portfolio that's been allocated. Someone's run you a probability of success report that with a dial on it that tells you you have an 83% chance of not outliving your money. Maybe they created a spreadsheet having you take out 4% a year, showing you where your required minimum distributions are coming from. That isn't a plan. A plan is going to highlight year by year which accounts you're going to take your income from at which age to mitigate the biggest risk in your retirement, which is something called sequence of return risk. We saw that this year, right? In 2020, we saw more market volatility than we have, I think, in history. And that market volatility, see, people think it's the investments that are going to drive the performance. It's not. It's when you're going to take money out of those investments that are going to drive whether you outlive your money or not. Average rate of return becomes totally irrelevant once you start pulling money out of those accounts. You can't run a spreadsheet taking out 4% a year and have an average 5% of rate of return. And that's not going to work because there's it's your return isn't static. It goes up and down. And the worst thing you can do is taking withdrawals, taking income from accounts that are exposed to volatility. And when it's down, we need to avoid taking money out of those accounts. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I think 2020, I, I don't think we can underscore how much that became real in 2020 because oh yeah right so think of all of the people out there who re- retired yep. 7 million who were either forced to retire or go part time who now needed income and they're taking income in february in march and in april down. and the market's down significant and then 35% of them panic and go to cash and then they go to cash they're right. they're, 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 they're they're done they're done they're they done. don't even know they're done they're that's done right. they that's can't right. recover because right. every year they're going to continue to take their 4 5 6% to, to live on because that's what they need there's no way to recover but it's here's, impossible here's where planning can can avoid that right i mean at the end of the day we spend a lot of time in the class Talking about how do you create a plan so that you're not forced to take funds, income from volatile assets, That's right? right? And we, we talk about all the different strategies, right? Paul, doesn't that help? You know this as a psychologist. If there's a plan and you can see where you're pivoting when there's market events every three to seven years, aren't you more likely to be disciplined and not panic, Paul? For sure, of course. Yeah. And your background's in yeah, psychology, yeah, sure. right? Yeah, yeah so, for sure. So then you, then, then you compound tax planning, which we spend hours talking about tax planning. How do I take the income most tax efficiently? And there's so much tax planning to be had, making sure you're managing your brackets, Roth converting, taking your social security at the right time from a tax perspective. Everyone thinks social security is a calculator decision. No, it's not. It's a tax decision. The impact of social security, how much it's going to be taxed and how it impacts taxation on your RMDs, your capital gains, short and long term, your dividends. It's a puzzle. Again, 2020, yes. an amazing year, right? Because why? Because the likelihood that your taxes, our tax are going up as a result of 2020 have gone up significantly. If you think your tax aren't going you got up. It. It, so, so if tax planning wasn't important before 2020, it's a massive lesson that we're learning now. Well, we are. And taxes are on sale still. We don't know how long. And I will tell you, so in our private practice, which we don't talk about a lot, our average client is saving between five and fifteen thousand dollars a year in taxes throughout their entire life. You do the math. If you save ten thousand dollars a year for twenty years, that's two hundred thousand dollars more money you have to live on or give to your loved ones, right? So 
That's what we teach in the class is how, when, and why to take income to minimize taxes, minimize sequence of return risk, that volatility, and how do you properly invest to effectively give you the best outcomes. And then, of course, Paul, there is the surviving spouse, right? Legacy isn't just the children or your, it's your, if you're married, your surviving spouse. And how are you going to leave your surviving spouse for most people? They make a lot of mistakes and leave the surviving spouse with nothing but taxable income, huge tax liabilities. As a result, their income goes down, their taxes go up because they go from married filing joint to single with all kinds of challenges and decisions to be made in their 80s when you die, right? right. You got your spouse, maybe that has nothing to do with finances, making major decisions when you die in your 80s. And then you got your children, and, that, and we cover estate planning, how to protect the assets for the children, leave it most tax efficiently. Here's one. Here's one. Yep, give it to me. Emergency funds, right? Yeah, people P- misunderstand P- that. P- if 2020 did not highlight how important it is to have enough emergency funds, so a statistic, 30% of reti- people in retirement, 30% during the pandemic withdrew money because they didn't have enough emergency funds funds to cover their emergencies mistake right huge mistake right because the market was down you can't withdraw when the market is down this is a if we have a a major event in the first five years of your retirement your chances outliving your money increase by 75 percent. that's a fact this is why we teach the classes that's why they're seven hours in length this is a comprehensive class we're going through 200 page textbook executives cfos ceos cpas are attending this course so they can build a retirement plan. It's a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.